My name is Dr. Kelly Kazmarzik, and I'm admin coordinator for mental health with College Career and Student Support Department uh, here in Prince William County Schools. So what inspired you to get into the mental health field? So when I was in sixth grade, I had a teacher who decided to do a unit on psychology and uh, really kind of did almost an intro to psychology course for us. And we learned about some of the pioneers like Skinner, Rogers, and Maslow. And, um, you know, moving into high school, I wound up having uh, some friendship group issues. And our dean of students did a mediation for us and spent, you know, quite quite an amount of time working through our issues together. And uh, I was really impressed with the idea that that an adult would take that kind of time to work with students through their their issues. Um, so when I went into undergrad and I studied psychology, wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go with that and uh, thought school counseling was the way to go. Um, by the time I got my master's degree, I, I, I was in love with the profession and I've been a practicing school counselor for 22 years. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Well, prior to my position right now. So. So how important is it for students to have a strong support system? It comes to mental health connection and relationships. That support system is really the backbone. And we've got school-based mental health teams in the schools working with the staff to foster these relationships with students and staff members and the families of those students. So you know, it really is critical to have that strong support system when young people are growing up. And what are the some of the programs that you work on to help students' mental health? So we have in the county, we require every school to offer a comprehensive school counseling program. And through that, they provide evidence-based programming to support the students' health and wellness. Um, so you've got your school counselors, your psychologists, and your social workers all kind of working in tandem. And really, we work in a framework, so to speak. So if you think about tier one, all students are receiving these foundational lessons on social emotional topics. And then in tier two, students are going to need a little extra support. So those students might have individual and small group counseling, and then students who require more targeted intensive interventions, they receive those supports as well from the different school-based mental health professionals. Yeah, with that, how important is it to educate not only students, but the families with uh, on mental health? Well, I think it's really important. And if you think about it, that Families and students, I mean, this is, there's a huge partnership there. And the, the vision of Prince William County Schools is every student will graduate on time with the knowledge, skills, and habits of mind necessary to create a thriving future for themselves and their community. And really, when you ask about educating not just the students, but their families on mental health, really, that's all connected. Mental health is a critical component of overall health and wellness. And students who are well learn better and thrive, and not just for themselves, but for their families and their community. And parents are partners through all of that. And part of what we do is really making sure that students, you know, have those trusted adults both in and out of school to go for help. We provide those comprehensive school counseling programs that address all kinds of things in the social emotional realm, academic realm, career, career wise as well. And really when it comes to supporting the families, having them understand that mental health information and really help guide them on where to go for additional support, that all kind of ties back into our strong vision. Yeah, what advice would you give any student going through a tough time? I would say, first and foremost, be self-aware. And, and that's a process and that's a skill that they've got to learn, but recognizing when they're struggling and then really connecting, asking for help. Who are those trusted adults in your life? 
we've got school counselors and social workers and psychologists and teachers and other staff members there to help, but really helping them to understand asking for help and where to go for that. And the other piece is, is making sure that, you know, you can't just wish for it. You've got to work for it, right? And work within those, those supports that are in place to really help those students thrive. Um, so, so that would be my advice there. And I know in the county, they're working on new crisis receiving center in Woodbridge. How will more resources in the community like that help the students? Well, more is better, right? Um, we're always trying to connect students and their families to additional resources. So it really will be such a help to have more, especially in the mental health realm. And you, you've you been doing this, you said, uh, over 22 years. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen the stigma of just talking about mental health lessening? Oh, absolutely. I think as awareness is increasing, that stigma is decreasing. And I've definitely seen the shift over the course of my career. Um, there's always room for growth. And, and you know, that's that's part of education, right? That constant learning. Um, but I think the the shift is, is happened and, and we're definitely headed in the right direction. How does it feel for you when you hear stories of people getting the help they need because of the work you're doing? Uh, it's invigorating. It, it really is. I, I really am inspired by change. And when you see that shift in somebody's sense of hope, or you see their growth, or even if their burdens are eased even just a little bit, it's it's very rewarding. What are some of the things that motivate you? Um, I would say connections, really, that, that restorative power that when uh, human beings connect and and just being able to make a difference motivates me each and every day. And since you do a lot to help students' mental health, what do you do to help your own mental health? <laughs> um, I definitely prioritize my sleep, for sure. Uh, eight to 10 hours every day. Um, but the other piece is I spend time with family and friends and really um, deliberately tend to my connections. Um, I think it's really important to keep a healthy mindset of patience with myself and just a realistic expectation about what what I can do, what I'm capable of doing and, and still stretching myself, but also, um, you yeah, know, giving myself a little bit of grace. And then really just the compassion restoration practices or self-care practices, uh, those types of things really do help take care of me emotionally, mentally, uh, to help me be ready to do the work that I do.